On this Super Tuesday, numbers continue to roll in tonight. We've got the latest results for the primaries in both local and state races. We have our team of reporters across San Antonio covering all the key races from the races for U.S. Senate and House to several Texas races that could have huge implications across the state. And we will break it all down. But first tonight in the spotlight, our candidates, Governor Greg Abbott, has endorsed to support his year long fight to create school vouchers. Now, that issue was not on the ballot. However, the governors go after Texas Republicans who voted against school vouchers. One of those races was for State House District 121. Abbott threw his support behind Mark LaHood, who's currently beating, as you can see here, incumbent Steve Allison 55% to 39%. Let's get to Mike Jimenez, who starts our coverage tonight. Mike? <laughs> Well, guys, it's definitely a party in here at La Hood's watch party. Now, we spoke with the candidate just a short time ago who tells us that many told him not to run in District 121 because he's too conservative and Steve Allison is too entrenched in the district. But he says after he prayed with his wife, he decided to run. And it looks like tonight those prayers were answered. Now, at last check, the numbers La Hood shows uh, ahead 54% of the vote and Allison with just under 40%. A third candidate, Michael Champion, captured a little more than 6% of the vote. After the initial results came in, we spoke with Steve Allison, who says he was not too concerned about the gap, but was disappointed with Governor Abbott's support of La Hood and his constituents for falling for the negative ad campaigns. Uh, but I'm disappointed uh, that I don't think the, that they looked at qualifications and background uh, and, were, and were sold by this, uh, the attack ads and the negative campaigning, and that's unfortunate. That's not what we should be about. From the very first day, people were receptive to it because our messaging isn't political, it's common sense. Secure the border just like we would our front doors. Voter integrity so our voices are heard. Empower parents and make sure we focus on education of our children, which is tied to school choice and fighting DEI in our schools. They spent 13 days. LaHood went on to thank those who supported him and had a message for those who didn't vote for him. He says that he wants to still earn your vote and hear your voice. He says he believes a representative should represent everyone in the district accurately and fairly. Now, to avoid a runoff, LaHood would need to secure at least 50% of the vote, which it looks like he has done tonight. Mike Menes, Kins 5. And on the Democratic race for State Rep District 121, Laurel Jordan Swift, you can see here, with 75% of the vote defeating Shakir Sina with 25% of the vote. Tonight, two seats are up for grabs for Bear County Commissioner's Court. For Precinct 1, Democrat incumbent Rebecca Clay Flores is currently leading against five other candidates, but so far has not secured 50% of the vote. And for Precinct 3, Republican incumbent Grant Moody has the lead over Chris Schuhart, 52% to 48%. Ken's Five reporter Megan Reyna is covering both races tonight. Megan? Well, ECs Henry, I was able to visit with Rebecca Clay Flores earlier at her watch party, but right now I'm outside Grant Moody's watch party where he's just now talking with his supporters, a small personal group here tonight. And it, it kind of sounds like some claps, some cheers because he is ahead with a decent lead right now. Too soon, of course, to call this one, but right now it looks like he might be on the ballot. The latest numbers have him at about 52%. Now he's facing off against business owner Chris Shukart, who ran a mainly self-funded campaign for San Antonio mayor last year. Of course, now running against Moody. If Moody, though, is reelected. This would be his first four-year term as a commissioner, but he says he's confident with what he was able to accomplish since he was elected during a special election in 2022. Because I think there's a lot more work that, that needs to be done. Um, you know, we've focused on public safety, which I still think is, is foundational and pri priority number one. Uh, but also there's work to be done around spending, around making sure we get, um, you know, our, our property taxes down. And like I mentioned, we spent some time earlier in Precinct 1 for Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores, who says that she was really confident this wasn't going to go into a runoff. But like we just heard, 
it appears it could if she doesn't get that 50%. She was facing five candidates for that Democratic ballot, but she says regardless, she's confident moving forward in this election. She says that she's proud of what she was able to accomplish in her four years as a commissioner for Precinct 1. And here's what she said about the election cycle so far and the support she's received. It's really I'm thankful to my team, to my block walkers, to the voters, to constituents. So I'm just really... So still a lot of excitement there as well. And she, if she does make it to the ballot or if it goes to a runoff, whoever wins on the Democratic side will be facing off against Republican Lino Prado for that precinct one seat. Let's we'll send it back to you right now, EC's Henry. All right, Megan, thank you. In the race for U.S. Senate, nine Democrats are looking to challenge Ted Cruz in November. And tonight, you can see here, Congressman Colin Allred of Dallas declaring victory with 60% of the vote and earning the nomination to challenge Cruz. You can see he took the lead over State Senator Roland Gutierrez with 17% of the vote. Ken's 5 Zach Briggs is following this race for us tonight from Gutierrez's camp. Zach. Well, dozens of people gathered here at the friendly spot just south of downtown San Antonio supporting State Senator Roland Gutierrez. Certainly an emotional end for Gutierrez's campaign as he was seen embracing the parents of loved ones who died at Rob Elementary School almost two years ago. And he officially conceded. He called up Mr. Allred congratulating him for this win. And as he said, Henry, uh, Mr. Allred leading significantly in this race. As of 9 p.m., 53 percent of precincts reporting Allred hovering around 60 percent of the vote compared to Gutierrez, who was sitting around 15 percent. Now, earlier, Gutierrez greeted supporters, including the parents who lost their children in the Rob Elementary tragedy. Gutierrez has been a prominent advocate for the Uvalde community. He's pushed for accountability after the massively delayed response by law enforcement to take down the shooter who killed 19 children and two teachers. Allred has focused his campaign on a theme of bipartisanship, working with Republicans to find middle ground when it comes to various issues, including immigration and the border. He's also pledged to codify Roe versus Wade, if elected senator, believing that a woman has the right to choose when it comes to abortion. But I promise you here right now that my fight against Ted Cruz isn't over. And my fight against Donald Trump isn't over. And my fight against these Republicans isn't over. Because, folks, they don't give one damn red cent about you. People elect leaders to represent them and their interests. And to try to fix things for them. Not to look out for themselves. We've had enough of that with Ted Cruz. It's time to go in a different direction. And now Congressman Allred and his campaign certainly laser focused now on what's to come in November when he faces off against Ted Cruz, who's hoping to secure a third term in office. Now we're live south of downtown. Zach Briggs, Ken's 5. Thank you, Zach. We now turn to the U.S. Congressional D District 23, 23 race, excuse me, where incumbent Tony Gonzalez has been waiting to see if he'll be able to avoid a runoff election. And so far, it looks like a runoff is eminent. Ken's 5's Andrew Moore is outside his campaign's watch party right now. What are you seeing there, Andrew? Yeah, the watch party is wrapping up right now without any victory at least currently, because the winning candidate needs, needs to get more than 50% of the vote to avoid that runoff. Uh, Gonzalez started around 49% when the early voting came in. Now it's only around 46%. So if the vote total stays that way, once all the votes are in, Gonzalez will be going head to head against the runner up candidate. And that is Brandon Herrera. Herrera is a second amendment YouTuber with his own firearms manufacturing business. And he has been going on the attack with mailers in particular. Gonzalez has long been focused on the border with his campaign. He's been calling for increased deportation rotation flights and faster processing of migrants. So the border is going to continue to be a major talking point as this campaign continues. We did ask Gonzalez's team for a statement, but they couldn't give us one as of yet. Uh, it is important to remember that these election results are not official. That could actually take two more weeks and there could be more mail-in ballots on the way. If you are sitting just under 50%, then those extra ballots could be extremely important. Back to you. All right, thank you, Andrew. And in the Democratic race for U.S. House District 23, right now, S. Lee Moen has the lead over Lee Balsinger.
In the presidential primary, former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden are the clear front runners, but neither can clinch the nomination this Super Tuesday. Right now, the only candidate still in the race on the Republican side is former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. But as of now, she's only picked up one victory in the primary. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden easily wins the primary with 86 percent or 85 percent of the vote that is here in Texas. CBS News exit polls show immigration and the economy are the top issues for voters as we head into the general election. And right now at Kins5.com, you can find a full breakdown of the results tonight. Again, they're still coming in. Our coverage doesn't stop here. Our Vanessa Croy is live with the sheriff's race, her report, as well as other state races in minutes.